Welcome back, Nutrition 403 students. This week's lab will feature poultry, and in this demo, I'll be demonstrating how to make chicken cacciatore. In this recipe, I've reduced the amounts in half, as you can see in my red writing off to the side, and made two substitutions. The first substitution I made was instead of using a whole chicken and cutting it up, I used chicken breast because that was the only option available at the grocery store. My second substitution was I replaced the white wine with a 1 to 1 equal ratio of chicken stock because I simply forgot to buy wine. Now, remember, cooking with wine will cook off the alcohol, but it helps flavor the dish when you're cooking. Also note that cremini mushrooms are also known as baby bella mushrooms. So here are my ingredients and my mise en place, but I skipped showing you all how to cut vegetables and herbs since you've been doing so well with that in lab. Always remember to keep practicing at home. But I did want to point out that you can see I used a separate cutting board for my vegetables and my raw chicken. Also note, I replaced my white wine with more chicken stock, so my total amount for the recipe is half a cup of chicken stock, which I have pre-measured in the liquid measuring cup. The first step is to dredge my chicken in flour, and to season my flour, I whisked in salt and pepper with a fork before dredging my chicken. You can see I used a pie dish here because it's flat and large enough to place my chicken breasts in without the flour spilling everywhere. With a fork, or you can use tongs, I shake off any excess flour and set my chicken aside separately. The next step is to cook the chicken in a thin layer of oil in a saucepan. I let my chicken cook on one side for a while before flipping it to give it more time to brown. You can see the edges of the chicken start to turn white. That's because the proteins are denaturing and coagulating, or recombining, into a new structure. This gives it a white and opaque appearance, just like when you cook a fried egg. You can start to see the brown golden color on the chicken as time passes along, with more brown bits sticking to the bottom of the pan. Those brown bits are called fond, and that's what I wanted. I achieved this by using a thin amount of oil to get that Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction between the protein, specifically the amino acids, and the reduction of sugars in the chicken. You may think, why are there sugars in chicken? Isn't it mainly protein with some fat? Well, yes, but meat we consume comes from the muscles of animals, and remember, glycogen, or carbohydrate energy reserves, are stored in those muscles. Back when we made French onion soup, there was a caramelization reaction because the onion does not contain protein but sugar, and specifically oligosaccharides, which you'll learn later on. The next step is to add onions and garlic right into the same pan to pick up those flavors. We don't need to worry about cross-contamination here because the pan will continue cooking with medium to high heat on, and it'll kill off any remaining pathogens. I let the onions and garlic get slightly translucent since they will continue cooking as I add my mushrooms and rosemary next. After the mushrooms are tender and the rosemary is cooked down, I add in the green bell pepper and let those cook for one minute. Now I'm ready to deglaze my pan. I push my veggies to the side so you can see the process better. I add my chicken stock, and this is where you'll also add white wine, into the pan and with my spoon I get the fond off the bottom and the liquid picks up the flavor. You can start to see the chicken stock gets darker as the fond dissolves into it and the bottom of the pan is becoming more clear. Lastly, I'll add my chicken in and diced tomatoes back into the pan and let it finish cooking all the way through for about 20 to 30 minutes with a lid on. The last step is called braising, where the chicken finishes cooking internally along with developing the flavors from the vegetables. Here is the finished product with egg noodles as the starch and the chicken cacciatore with vegetables on top. 
To garnish, I added sprigs of rosemary off to the side. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and let me know if you have any questions. Now, go give this recipe a try. You won't know if you like it until you try it.